Hello! Welcome to Chewing the Cud. Here we are again with some news from the world of showbiz, a quick look at the silly things from the internet, and our next instalment of our life lessons. But before all that, it's time to say hello to the man with the golden... No, sorry, I can't say that. It's Mike. I don't see what's wrong with saying that. Golden. The golden... You know what? I'm not allowed to say on air either. <laughs> And I've been ankle deep in the middle of the internet waves to find some fun things, including when a beehive isn't a good idea. Mm, and I have some great showbiz news, including the return of a children's TV favourite. Oh, I'm, I'm intrigued by that already. Mm. You can keep in touch with us on all the usual social media platforms. Just look for The Cud TV. Our website is thecud.tv and if you want to listen to this wonderful show as a podcast, just search for Chewing the Cud. If you have interacted with us on social media, then you may see a name going along the bottom of the screen and think, hey, they have the same name as me, but no, that is actually you. I think we are about level in the overall wins, uh, Mike. Yeah, whatever, Trevor. So, uh, no, no, I'm Lee. Uh, You're Mike. Oh, just, just play the game. Game of the Week. Did you know the producer used to work in Hollywood? He was a jobbing screenwriter and came up with the scripts for many blockbuster films. He said his best day was when he offered them Free Willy, Hot Fuzz and Shaft, and they said they were also interested in his snatch if he'd consider giving Dirty Harry a happy ending. I've got some early script ideas here. But his typewriter kept missing letters out, and the movie's nearly developed in totally different ways. We just need to work out what films they eventually became. Haley, should I go first? Please do. OK, let's have the first slide up. An intergalactic battle wages over the price of bitumen. See, when it's got words and things in, <laughs> it makes me confused. Um, an intergalactic <laughs> Star Wars. OK. So so you're saying Star Wars, but that's yeah. the name of the actual film. Oh, OK. So we'd need to lose a letter. I need to lose a letter. Yeah. OK. So, yeah, so it was Star Wars. OK, so, now I understand it now. So, yeah. OK, that, we'll, we'll count that one as a practice. No okay, points for anyone. OK, thank okay. you for that one. OK, all right, all right. Okay, you, so you, so I would like me to do this yeah. one. OK, right, OK, let's, let's bring it up. Um, men with just over a dozen chickens make dramatic return from their trip to the moon. Whoa. Oh, 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 Apollo 13. OK, you're saying Apollo. Apollo 13. Because that's... Missing the A. Oh, yeah, and, and is Apollo French Polo, for Polo, chicken? Apollo, I think, is Italian for chicken. For chicken. Shall we see? You've you got it right. Yes. I have a feeling you might, you might win this one today uh. because I, don't, I left my brain at home. <laughs> <laughs> so, OK, let's have uh, a look at the next one, then. Robert De Niro stars as a geriatric bovine prize fighter. Ooh. I know, I've got it. Uh -huh. Right? Aging bull. Aging bull? Yeah. Geriatric old. I got it right. Oh, Raging Bull. I was trying to work out the actual name of the film. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I might, I might. I've worked it out now. I think you might be in for a, a, a contest. A contest, not a yeah. thrashing. Not a thrashing, no. That's something very different. <laughs> no. Let's have another one for Mike. A juvenile bear meets a soap salesman and together they form an underground cage fighting group. A juvenile bear. Oh, fight cub. I'm missing the elf from club. Oh, shall we, shall we see? It is yeah. right. Do you think the viewers at home are getting these? Or... <laughs> what, are, you, are you saying that the producer set, just set the bar very, very, <laughs> oh, yeah. very low for yeah. us? Just put pictures of Kylie in different <laughs> places. That's what we Different want. people. Different places. Not in different people, in different places. You know, like in front of the Blackpool Tower. Kylie in front of the Blackpool Tower. Right, OK. That, that's level. OK, right. <laughs> Should get the next one, then. Vin Diesel puts on 100 kilograms to become a streetcar racer, pursued by a cop investigating money laundering. Uh, is it Fat and Furious? 
Because <laughs> that's the only Vin Diesel film I know, is Fast and Furious. So, Ooh. Fat and Furious. Fat and Furious. Shall we have a look? Fat oh, and the yes. Fat and the Furious. Well, I, th I think that counts. Yeah. That's the title of my autobiography. <laughs> 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 um, OK, is it another one for, for Mike? Moody teenage absconds from his school. His concerned father sets across the ocean, sets out across the ocean to find him. Ooh. That's uh, that sounds like a hard one. I don't think it's that kind of movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, a moody moody teenager. teenager. I've only got Ferris Bueller's Day Off in my head, but that doesn't... No, and he doesn't set across the, off across the ocean. Unless it's Ferry Bueller Day Off. Oh, could be. Ooh. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! no we're finding it. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were thinking too, too high. Well. <laughs> we were thinking too 80s. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> finding Emo. I get that now. Yeah, I get that now. I get that now. Shall, shall we have a quick... quick um, Points check. Scores. Yeah. How many points each? Two points each. Two points each. Oh. That doesn't sound right. It doesn't. It sounds, feels like we've done far more <laughs> it, of those. It feels like Lee's got an extra point, but I'm not complaining. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is, it, is, it, is it my turn now? Is it? Is it? In a dystopian future, a man sets out to make the best promotional video ever set to music by Tina Turner. So I know the film that she that she... Oh, I've got it. <laughs> it's Ad Max Beyond the Thunderdome. Okay, shall we see? Ad Max. Can I get an extra point for the extra words? Because it was Beyond the Thunderdome. Beyond the Thunderdome. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whatever. Apparently you're getting half a point. Half a point. Extra, extra bit of the title. We don't need another hero. It sounds like um, Liza Minnelli whenever I say it. All of your accents. Oh. Like Liza <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Proud dancer. She didn't sing that in that film. <laughs> I thought you were about to say she didn't sing that song. Like, she definitely did. <laughs> <sighs> OK, let's have another one for, for Mike. So we've got another one for you. Okay, I'm ready. Um, a large boat full of dinosaurs is set adrift for 40 days and 40 nights. Ooh. I know it! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what was with the manic look? <laughs> Did you say that? Like, uh, um. Come on. All right, OK. It's, I'm still scared by that look. Um, 40 days, 40 say... nights. Who, who set sail for 40, 40 days and 40, 40 nights? nights. Um, Bob Dole? No. It's just really old. Um, oh, Jurassic Park. Shall we see? I gave him a clue, so it doesn't count. I think it still counts. Yeah, it is. What was your clue? Re 40 days and 40 nights. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a clue. It is. <laughs> Rereading something on the screen. Yeah. Is <laughs> it's just... Ooh, it's getting a bit, it's getting a bit tense. <laughs> Nearly said tetchy. OK, shall we have the last one then? OK, let's see. Let's see if I can thrash the life out of you. <laughs> a young riparian mammal is sent to boarding school where he learns to cast spells. I don't know what I don't know what riparian means. Um, of the riverbank. Of the riverbank. Yes, I had to think about that and remembered it. I didn't get whispered in my ear at all. Um, I so now I know. I'm gonna go for um, Harry Otter. But but what's the rest of it? Harry Otter in the who gives the. Is that, is that the latest version of the... <laughs> Shall we Harry see... Po Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Bone. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we have a look, see if Jake Let, and Let's wrote see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, the, actually, Harry Otter and the Philosopher's Sorcerer's Bone is much more entertaining, <laughs> I feel, than, than the original. Shall, shall we see who won? Shall we, who, shall who, we have a look?
There's four and a half to you and three and a half to me. Yay! So you, you're back on your winning streak. I am. I Congratulations. am. Congratulations. Yeah. What a lot of sh. <laughs> Apparent. Uh, I'm not allowed to say that, am I not? Anyway, <laughs> it's not a swear word if you say it quickly enough. Coming up, we have the next one of our life lessons. But before we get there, we'll stop off with a visit in his old folks' home and his showbiz news, it's Lee. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now we go to the man who, while at Steps concert, stole a lick of Beyonce's ice cream. It's Lee with the showbiz news. Questions. Why would Beyonce be at a Steps concert? <laughs> Why would she not? Why would she be eating ice cream? Why would she not? It's more likely she would be drinking lemonade. Okay. Oh, because that's the name of one of her albums, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Okay, let's have a bit of showbiz <laughs> news. We've got we've got some mega exciting news today. Oh, really? You were you? Well, I was a fan mm. of Tiger King. Were you a fan of Tiger King? I, all I have to say to that is, hello, you cats and kittens. <laughs> what was, what was <laughs> she that? Does, she does waving. Um, well, apparently there are talks to bring it back for a second series. How, how are they going to do a second series? Well, they so the Lion Lion King. <laughs> That's a different. Movie. <laughs> it's the circle of life. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> um, the guy, what's he called? Joe Exotic. Uh huh. He's in prison. He is. Yeah. So he's and like bars. in the middle of serving twenty-two years in prison. However, they're in talks of of perhaps interviewing him in prison. So Carol Baskin's on board. Carol Baskin! <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's on board. That's probably the best act that you've ever done. So we've got, so here's a picture of Carol Baskin um, and here's a picture of, of Joe Exotic in my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I, every time I watched that show, I thought, oh, they'd love that shirt. I want it back. <laughs> you can put it, you can do present mail and send it straight back. Um, so... They've got the so, so new things have got the rights <laughs> <You're> right. yep, <laughs> to 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 produce it, okay. and um, so other people that were in it have said that they will do it, and he has said so. Joe Exotic has said that he will take part in it as well because he wants to clear his name. Oh, cash in. Yeah. As it's um, she, so, so Carol Baskin. Carol Baskin! <laughs> <Yeah>. She. <laughs> Tigers! Um, <laughs> I love my tigers! Um, are we the same person? <laughs> um, she has asked for $1 million. $1 million? <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that accent went a bit around right early. Yeah, um, to be in it. Okay. So that is, that's exciting news. That is exciting news. Um, I want to know whether his most recent husband will be in it as well. But he had many different husbands. No, because oh. they, they all left him apart from the most recent one that said he'd wait for him forever. So what, what was his name? Can you remember what his last husband was called? The cute one. The, the cute one. Yeah. We've got Dylan Passage. Is that? <laughs> that's a poor name, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and and Jeff Lowe. I have a. Is Jeff Lowe? No, Jeff Lowe was the, the guy that um, took his park over. So signed oh, over the park to me. Okay. Him, kicked him out, and then they found that the um, park transfer was an illegal one. Right. So he got transferred back to him. So Carol Baskin could then sue him and get money. Right. Okay. So we don't. So so we don't sorry, know who spoilers. Dylan. If you've not seen this first season, <laughs> it's been out I'm forever. Sorry. We don't know who Dylan Passage is. I think that is the fit one. Is the fit one, well, the fit husband that was yeah. at the end? Yeah, at the end. Okay, yeah. right. Not the ones that started off quite attractive and then got less attractive as the show went on. When they did the follow-up, he'd like had some teeth put in and mm -hmm. gained a bit of weight. Yeah, um, and shave. And... Yeah, so, you know, who, who, can, who are we to judge? But that's quite exciting <laughs> news. Because she, she's rumoured, Carol Baskin, Carol Baskin <laughs> is rumoured to be going into um, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. I can't wait for that. I will hope that. So, yeah, we're excited about that. That's an exciting one. Um, and, and another bit of excitement. So, Saturday morning, when you were a child, mm -hmm. when you got up out of bed, what was the programme that you would turn on? So, I would put on my granddad's wrestling tapes when I got up first thing in the morning, really quietly. 
because he used to film it overnight. So he used to be on at like two o'clock in the morning. So he used to put the video recorder on, okay. record that, and then watch that. So that's what I used to watch on a Saturday morning. But then I had to rewind the tape so he didn't know I'd watched it. Oh, so opened a window there <laughs> into a world that we, we, we didn't need. Let's no. close it. Let's yes. close it and move on <laughs> and get that mental image of Mike in his PJs watching wrestlers. As a child. <laughs> Not as a teenager. Well, I'm, you know, whatever. Well, then, um, the gummy bears as well. The gummy bears? Gummy bears, bouncing here and there and everywhere. OK. Yeah. Were, you, were you a fan of any of the, like, Saturday morning shows that had presenters, that kind of thing. So like Saturday Superstore when I was when I was <laughs> when I was a like child. live and kicking. Yeah. Like going that, live. Yeah, those kind of things. Yeah, that sort of thing. I've yeah, watched okay. that on occasion. Well apparently Ant and Deck are yeah. gonna be celebrating thirty years in showbiz. Thirty years. And they're yeah. gonna bring back SMTV Live as a one off. You, you don't look excited by this. We've got a picture of them there, as they were. So Ant and Deck, Cat Dealey in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, this is what Ant and Deck look like now. Mm -hmm. Just bigger foreheads. Bigger, receding hairlines, which I know all about. Yeah. We um, both do. Yeah. Um, and then Cat Dealey, who is looking quite good I, I, for yeah. 400, I, she... uh, I would say. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're in talks to, to, to record like a um, celebratory one-off of SMTV Live and bringing back, so they're going to do Chums again, which is the skit that they did of Friends. Friends. Wonky Donkey. Wonky Donkey. Um, my favourite was when they did the Beautiful Cause <laughs> with bags over their heads. <laughs> you see, now it's coming back. No, I, I remember. It was very funny. It, it was. It was very funny and it was probably the funniest Anton Deck I've ever been, in my opinion. Yes. Um, but I'm bored of Anton Deck being in everything. Uh, but but SMTV was good. So if they could, if they could, and Kat Dealey hasn't been on television in the UK for years and years and years. She oh, went she over did. to America and has become like a an American presenter. It was apparently it, it went on air. In 2001, no, they left in 2001. I was so they say, Carl have been they, on there in 2001. <laughs> they, they did it up until 2001. So from 1998 until 2001, they did it and then they left. Cat Dealey left a year later in 2002, and then it was taken over by H and Claire from Steps. And that lasted a week, and <laughs> no one watched it. <laughs> uh, to be fair, it still was quite funny when H and Claire did it. How long did it last for with H and Claire? It, that ended in 2003. <laughs> so it lasted longer than their solo careers. Oh, bitter. <laughs> no, it's um, not bitter, it's true. Uh, but I, I think if they, if they can do it well, then that should be quite yeah. funny and bring back some of the... Because I like, I like a children's television programme where they're quite unpleasant to the children, but the children don't realise that... that they're <laughs> too busy going, I'm on TV and I've yeah. lots of sugar yeah. for breakfast. Yeah, I, I, yeah. The Wonky Donkey where he used to scream at the screen... To, to yeah. uh, the child was hilarious, <laughs> and the and and the beautiful cores, beautiful cores, <laughs> not you, Jim, um, <laughs> was amazing. So yeah, I would love that. Well, if if you could bring back a children's TV program, which would you bring back? I would want to bring back Rainbow. Were you of a Rainbow age? I, so I, I I got to watch it again because I've got an older brother who and a video recorder, as we've already discussed. So. I used to watch a lot of kids' TV shows that he watched that Mum recorded. Yes. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, Rainbow. Rainbow. Definitely bring back Rainbow. Just because of all the innuendo. Which you didn't really get when you was a child. No, but you, if you watch them now, about them say, shall we play with our twangers? Yeah. It's hilarious. There is that famous one that you can find on YouTube, which is pure filth, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Where they sing a really inappropriate song, <laughs> uh, but it was never aired. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, well, yeah, bring back that. And then... Um, this is the most random bit of showbiz news ever. So we've already spoken about H and Claire from Steps. Uh -huh. Would you put Steps, would you combine them with the life of Princess Diana? Oh, God, no. No, well, it's happening. So a production company are at the moment putting together the musical of Princess Diana's life soundtracked to the music of Steps. This is not a lie. This is not a joke. This is a real thing. We have, that we, there is there is a poster there's a poster and everything, there's a and everything. <laughs> so has, therefore, has anyone told the Daily Mail about look, this? One, it's going to be called One for Sorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> a musical featuring the, the 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 steps 
the back steps. catalog. Yeah. The steps back catalog. Steps. So there is no, so there's no details here of exactly which song is going to feature in which section of her life. Tragedy has to be at the funeral. It has to be. Really? Yeah. yeah. We've got, we've got, we've got, I don't think I don't think Steps ever met Diana. We've got a picture here of Steps meeting Charles in a really awkward photo opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does it look like to me like they're all doing like tragedy, but Prince Charles is going, I surrender. <laughs> yeah. Take the poor people away. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be um, I don't know how they're going to... I really don't know how they're going to do it. Obviously, just, Steps didn't write their music. No. So, just got, so <laughs> they're allowed to, to have it used by other people. Um, so you five, six, seven, eight at the polo match. <laughs> yeah, there is just... It... it, it, it it can't be it can't be a serious thing, really. It, it can it really. It, 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 I don't know how they're going to do it, but it's not the only musical production of of Diana's life that is 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 being created at the moment. Oh no, I, I, I can't take any more. Lee. In my head, uh, well, all I've got is, a, is is Princess Diana wearing culottes and um, a, a cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a look. Well, thank you, Lee. Um, coming soon, it's got more gravitas than Kim Kardashian. It's this week's life lesson. You have enough time to say, Alexa, play dog barking noises. But coming up next, it's Mike and the Buzz. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now we go to the man who thought Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was a real story. He truly is, truly scrumptious. It's Mike in the Buzz. I have been very busy this week. I have been rummaging around finding all sorts of little things, okay? But the first thing, someone that came flashing to my mind, I went, ooh, what's happened to that person? So I had a quick look. Macaulay Culkin. Okay. Did that just pop randomly into your just head? popped in my head? I wasn't watching any movies by him okay. or anything like that. Literally, just one day. Whatever happened to Macaulay Culkin? And luckily, I found him on Twitter. Did you? Yes. And he is possibly the most random person ever on Twitter. Okay. I, you know, I've got some tweets here, and I want you to think for yourself whether. Well, he's had a life, hasn't he's, he? He's had a life, but I, I think he's he's enjoying it now. Is that okay? Um, I like flowers because they're like grass that put on a fancy hat. That's good. That's good, Macaulay. <laughs> that, that's an interesting thought, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, I, wh why did I suddenly have an image of your garden when I thought of that? I don't know. Not, I don't, don't really know garden. what. Not your lady garden, just your normal <laughs> garden. <laughs> Few weeks after I've been to the beauty palace, of the <laughs> and and yeah, um, uh, was he high? Um, apparently not. Okay. Apparently these are these are all sober. Okay, because because he has <laughs> had issues. He's had issues in the past. Yeah. Apparently now he's clean. Okay. Well done him. Well done, McCoy. Um, but I think some damage has been done. Hmm. Um, the next one I found of his, which was an eighty-four percent match when he tried to face match himself with himself. Okay. <laughs> he, he's not got a lot of work at the moment, has he? He's not got a lot of work. He's, he's at a loose end. <laughs> Home Alone 8 <laughs> yeah. is still in production. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Yep. But to be fair, we've all tried to face match our own selves, haven't we? Yeah, but have you got a decent match, though? It keeps putting Jabba the Hutt on. <laughs> oh, that's sad but funny at the same time. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but it's funny. Um, I, I get random celebrities I've never even heard of. Okay. So like extras and stuff. But... All right, okay. Yeah, back to Macaulay. I was going to go Greg Wallace. <laughs> Ooh. Juices, fruit blood. Discuss. Okay. Apparently wants us to discuss that. <laughs> um... <laughs> Well, you, you could, you could, you could say it is 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 blood from from a fruit. <laughs> um, <laughs> is he still operating at, at an eight-year-old's age? I think he might have got a bit stuck. Yeah. Developmental. Developmental. Developmentally. Oh, yes. okay. I like Hanson. Like Hanson. You remember Hanson? 
Mm-hmm. Um, bop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ba doo bop. Yeah. <laughs> wop wa doo wop. Um, <laughs> hey. they, they've aged, but they're all still. <laughs> <laughs> Well, right. <laughs> uh, one of them has. Has he? And not the one you think. Oh, is the it the drummer? One. The little drummer? The little drummer. The little drummer boy. The little drummer grew up quite attractive. <laughs> <laughs> they're all like in the late 30s now, aren't they? Yeah. And they've all got like 18 wives each and about 87 children. <laughs> <laughs> no, they have. Uh, have they really? Well, I don't think they've got more than one wife. Oh, right, but okay, technically they like... could. Because they, they're, they're, yeah. <laughs> they keep getting married and then divorced. No, they're in that that religion, aren't they? That means they can have more than one wife. Mormons. Is it Mormonism? Mormonism? Mm. Mormonism? Mm. Or Quakers? No, I'm not, not Quakers. sure. Quakers we don't know. We yeah. might have to cut that yes. out. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's check for libel later. <laughs> okay. Okay. So he's got another one, has yeah. he? And this is one I think you can answer. What's the size limit between a cupcake and a cake? And there's a point where a large cupcake and a small cake is the same thing. Um, it doesn't... It's irrelative if you can fit it all in your mouth. Right. Yeah. So if you can fit it all in your mouth, it's a cupcake. It's just cake. It's just cake. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Macaulay, it's just cake. <laughs> um, I don't think that he... I would imagine that Macaulay has quite a small mouth. <laughs> Have you thought about Macaulay Cooker's mouth? <laughs> Only just this very minute now, when he's going... Yeah, it's quite a big mouth, though, isn't it? Yeah, but that's my mouth. No, not his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're different to Macaulay Culkin, Lee. There's a difference I'm aware of. <sighs> but, yeah. Ooh! I think we, <laughs> let's, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on from Away Macaulay. from Macaulay Culkin's mouth and why Lee's thinking about it. Mm. Another story that's grabbed me from the internet, OK, and it comes with a sense of warning. OK. OK, and that's not to interfere with nature. No. Okay. Doesn't like it. It doesn't like it, and it can bite back. Can. Or at least sting back, as this teen found out. Oh, dear. When he got stung over 600 times after inserting his penis inside of a beehive. That, that old smart. That's, yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's like, what's that buzzing noise? <laughs> do, do, <laughs> you see, there's questions. There's there questions, are, there are questions yes. Um, was it accidental? Did he trip and fall? With an erection. <laughs> <laughs> Did he trip and fall? Was he walking along and he accidentally inserted himself into a beehive? Yeah. No. He did it on purpose. Did it on purpose. Okay. So the <laughs> sort of sympathy level starts it's to go... Just not... Well, it'd be quite difficult to fall into a beehive. Well, you know, if it, I presume he's American. Is he, he is American? From Florida, yeah. So yeah, Florida, which is warm in Florida. It is warm in and, Florida, and yeah. he might have been thinking, you know, it's hot. I'm, I need, I need to go swimming. I need to go skinny dipping. Okay. Yeah, and gets out of the lake. Okay, out of the water. Out of the water. Out of the water. Um, goes for his clothes. It's a bit muddy. Slips. Uh-huh. Penis goes straight into a beehive. His erect penis goes into a beehive. It doesn't say it was erect. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you, have you noticed beehives are quite hard on the outside? Do you know, I've never actually, I've never actually had sex with a beehive. <laughs> <laughs> Revelations this week on Chewy the Cud. <laughs> Lee has never had sex with a beehive. I've never had romantic relations with a beehive. Well, that, that's news. Thank you for sharing that, Lee. Chicken, <laughs> yes. Beehive, no. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what a beehive looks like. Is it like? Is it it's like? It's like a, a, a cone. Okay. Yeah, they, they're quite tough on the outside. Cause otherwise, things can get in them and attack the bees. But there must be a way for the bees to get in and out. Hole. Little hole. Yeah. Well, we haven't seen the size of his member, so we don't know. <laughs> Judging. <laughs> Should we move on quickly? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so is he? Is he all right? He's okay now. Is he okay? Has the swelling gone down? The swelling's gone down, which is some, yeah. some, for some reason disappointed about. Oh. But he tastes of honey. <laughs> 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 so every cloud. <laughs> and if something catches your eye on the internet, why not share it with us? Just search for the Cud TV on all your social media platforms. Our thought for the day this week comes from Mrs. Belinda Mycock, and she writes... Dear Chewing the Cud, if a pig loses its voice, is it disgruntled? Yours, Mrs. Belinda Mycock, <laughs> Cockermouth. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Did you get that, Lee? What's she doing to pigs to make them start <laughs> grunting? Well, Belinda. Mm. OK, well, you know, I've been reading a book about pig biology. 
I didn't know that, no, Mike. I have, yes. <laughs> Did you know? Okay. Um, it's quite interesting. There's yes. even a twist in the tail. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. And that brings us to the story of the week. Okay. And that's the story of a cat burglar. Mm hmm. And that's actually a cat that has been found stealing people's shoes. Oh. <laughs> So, the owner of this cat um, has had to put a Facebook group together, OK, saying, have you lost some shoes recently in this neighbourhood? Because our cat might have stolen them. Stolen over 50 pairs of shoes. That's a lot of shoes. So, it's not stealing a single shoe. It's stealing the pair. It's, it, it, it's stealing one, then going back and stealing the other. And then where's it taking them? Just back to its house. It's got a small stall at the <laughs> side of the road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just doing a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> it's Why called Pussing Boots. <laughs> you see, now that makes it so much more enjoyable. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? Just taking the shoes, taking them home, leaving them on the step. OK. Just because it can. Just because it can. Just because it can. Um, so much so that the owner's actually installed a GPS tracker on the cat mm -hmm. so they can work out when the shoes arrive where they came from. OK. And the, the map of where this cat has travelled is quite scary. Oh, wow. It gets about this cat. That's a... So, I presume that all of these houses have to have a cat flap? No, 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 they're just people leaving them outside and stuff. Oh, because it's summer and it's they... Summer, right, OK. Just leave them out for the spiders to get into and bite your feet <laughs> when you put your feet in. <laughs> <laughs> is that a phobia of us? I leave that <laughs> Not particularly. I don't leave my shoes outside. Do not. I say don't go outside. You're not concerned about, <laughs> not concerned about spiders getting into your shoes? No. No? I'm They're crawling in my face, face when I'm asleep. In face. OK. Yeah, but not in my shoes. Yeah, OK. So they wouldn't survive, would they? <laughs> um, OK, so what have they done to, to resolve this? Um, Euthanised it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll put it with these shoes, kill a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, no. It's an illness. <laughs> They've put it through therapy. <laughs> no, they've just they've come to they've told the neighbours, look, if you leave your shoes out, they might end up at our house. Come and get them if you do. Have they, have they, how old is this cat? It's, it's uh, quite an old cat. It's quite an old cat. Yeah. Um, Does it think they're mice or rats or something? <laughs> Very big rice. <laughs> rice? <laughs> Very big mice. Okay. Yeah. But that's, that's all of the, sh the things I found on the internet this week. All oh, right. Well, thanks for that, Mike. I now know to make sure I have to hide my cork wedges at night because... I don't want spiders in them. Anyway, don't go anywhere, because coming up next is this week's life lesson. Welcome back. This is going to be well wicked in it. See, I told you that I can be straight. <laughs> it's time for this week's... Life Lessons. And this week it's pasta weaving. <laughs> it is indeed pasta weaving. Do you know what pasta weaving is? No. No, it's weaving pasta. Okay. It, it does what it says on the tin. Um, so there's lots of things you can make, so like baskets and bowls and things out of, but some of them are quite tricky. Did you eat them afterwards? No, no, no. So things like willow. Oh! oh. Oh, oh, right, right okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some mentality. Yeah. It's like, can I eat them? <laughs> can you eat? I, I think you could eat willow, but is it poisonous? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Just in case, don't eat willow. No, um, no, no. But, you know, you've got to, to like, like, with hazel, you've got to bend it and scrape it and all sorts. But pasta is something you have at home. Indeed. So, for, for this, you will need um, a suitable flat surface with a chopping board. I, I, I have a, a flat surface. Flat surface, lovely. You need a bowl as a mould. Uh, as a mould? OK, a I've mold. got a bowl. Yeah, yeah. And you also need some soaked, uncooked pasta. Soaked? Yes, yeah, so, so like spaghetti, like this. Oh. So you soak it for a few hours. It's just spaghetti. So have you brought your spaghetti with you? Yeah, but I don't know if I can... I could only find some hoops. Yeah, Getty that, hoops. That's Getty hoops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can I plait them? <laughs> yeah. I think you can make a, like a, a chain out of them, maybe. Oh, a lovely necklace. Yeah, yeah. 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 Getty necklace. That's not going to look messy at all, <laughs> is it? Oh. Um, well, let's see if I've got some... Oh, we got some spares. I've got some spare here for you. Oh, thank you. 
Now, have you, have you ever woven before? Have you ever woven before? Yes. <laughs> um, in and out of parked cars mainly. Um, but, um, uh, Is that to get, stop getting caught by the police? Yeah. Um, I, 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 no, I, not that I can recall. Not that you can recall? No. Okay. Um, so we're going for a basic weave. Okay, yeah. so the first thing you need to do is get a, a string of, of pasta out of the water. Do I have to? Yes, otherwise you can't weave it. <laughs> and you want to do this on the flat. Okay. You just pop a piece of pasta down. Like that. Horizontally or vertically? It makes no difference. <laughs> okay. okay. It's like a worm. It's like a worm. And you want to do that again another three times. So you want four altogether. Four, four pieces of... Four pieces of, of soggy pasta. Okay. And leave a bit of a gap. Okay. We reminds me of this very much of the time when I had threadworms. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> is there a story there you want to share? No, I just had threadworms. <laughs> and you kept them in a mug and a platter. I don't want to keep them in a mug. I'd say, no. <laughs> We're at my bottom. <laughs> so you should now have five pieces of pasta. Oh, five? Yes. You said four. Another four times. Oh, okay. Right, okay. I've got five pieces of... of, of Pasta. Okay. And I'm going to put another one, but along the top. Just lay it down like that. Okay. <laughs> you don't have to jiggle it quite so much. Well, it's got juice on it. Well, it's just water. It's not juice. It's just, okay, right. Across, right, yeah. Okay. Now, every alternate thread, we're going to call them threads now. Yeah. yeah. You need to have the pasta on top going underneath. So... Second one, yeah. You're going to pull out from underneath and put on top. Oh, okay. It's the one. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Like that. Ta da! Ta -da! And you're going to get another piece of pasta. Okay. And then do the same, but this time you're going to thread it underneath the first one and over the top of the other one. So. I'm going to turn mine around so people at home can see what I'm doing. So we're going to lift the first one. It's quite fiddly. And the trick is not to break your pasta. Like that. So it's under. And then over. And then under. Oh. Can you see what I'm doing? No. No. <laughs> I don't understand. Well, it'd be easier to lift, actually. Oh, that makes more sense. So it's easier if you lift the other end. So I lift the other end. Yeah. Yeah. And do what? And then pull, pull the other piece through. Oh, no, I've broken it. Oh, no, I've gone the wrong way. So this is, this is why it's tricky. OK. So you should have a piece of pasta going over, then under, then over, under, over. And then the next one should go under, over, under, over, under. Like that. OK. <laughs> under, over. Uh huh. Under, over. Under, over. Yeah. And you just keep doing it alternately. Till when? Until you've got a good amount of pasta threaded through. Well, this is a hoot and a holler. It is, isn't it? And then it's over, it, under. Yeah. So you keep going alternate. It, it's like tiny little mice intestines. <laughs> <laughs> when did you last see the intestines of a mouse? <laughs> That's what I imagined that they would be Oh, you like. imagined it? Yeah. Okay. Um, is this what they used to do in the olden times? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Over, under, uh, yeah. under, over. Under, over. Does it really matter if they're, they're not what you said? What? Under, over, over, under. Well, yes, because it means you'll get a hole in your, your weaving. This is how they used to make cloth. Is it? Yeah. With spaghetti? <laughs> not with spaghetti, no. With threads. Yeah, in Italy. In Italy, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, Put me off my stride. To be fair, covering my face in tinfoil <laughs> <laughs> yeah. was slightly more entertaining 
than platting mice guts. <laughs> it's not mice guts. When will this Rona ever end? <laughs> Stop us having to do this kind of crap and have real people in the studio. Actual people. <laughs> I think I think I've I've platted enough as that I want to. Okay. So you should now have have quite a, quite a, a nice little lattice. Of yeah. Pasta, like this, like this. See. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see yours. Hang on, I'm just still doing my you're last. Still, you're still doing your last one. My last effort. Right, okay. There. Oh, this is quite chunky. Rude. <laughs> no, the, the gaps are quite big. Okay. Oh, I'm losing bits of pasture. So once you've, you've, you've platted, you then need to transfer that into your mould. How? <laughs> so you put your bowl up, up, upside down on like that. Okay. <laughs> and when you release, you should take the form of the bowl. Okay. So you flip flipped and then you carefully release. See, but my pasta bits are stuck to the wood underneath. Yeah, it's a challenge. That's why it's, it's, why it's a craft rather than a naughty thing. <laughs> well, that went well. <laughs> and then what you do is you let that dry, okay, um, for a, a, about a week. Um, and then you can paint it with spray paints and things. And then you've got a lovely little, a little bowl that you can put things like potpourri in. Oh, okay, that's... That's lovely. <laughs> that, that, um, that, that, okay. Yeah. Or you could just use the bowl to put potpourri. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. Or, the, and, or even, why even bother doing the process of platting it on the wood? Plat mm -hmm. it in the bowl, on the bowl. Well, it's very, it's difficult enough on a flat surface. Imagine doing it on a curved okay. surface. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. let, let, let's hope that um, the viewers create something beautiful. Yeah, you, you can create some very pretty things. I've seen them on the internet. People have made like whole baskets and. Okay. Yeah. I'm still not convinced. Okay. That um, and also that is very carb heavy. <laughs> You're not supposed <laughs> to eat it. It's uncooked yeah. pasta. You need whole wheat. So <laughs> you just you've just destroyed all of your hard work. Didn't land on your head. That's what I was aiming for. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Was that what you were aiming for? Yeah, I wanted yes. to splat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, Spider-Man, okay. Um, and that brings us to the Picture of the Week segment of the show. And this week picture comes from Father Finial Flute. Dear Chewing the Cud, I have an extensive collection of dick pics, so I thought I'd share one with you. Oh, oh. that's, that's a, a classical dick. It is. Yes. Aged well, though. It, yeah. Always like a ride in York. <laughs> and don't forget you can share a picture with us, too. We've come to the end of the show for this week, but if you can't wait, you can always find us on the internet. Just search for The Cud TV on your social media. The TV is our website. And while you're on the website, have a look at our support section for exclusive clips. Stay safe, and we will see you next time. Bye! Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I love> <laughs>